Now that I think about it, being the new guy in town could actually have its advantages. Look, no one knows who we are. We don't need to be some bum hick farmer from out east. We could be a mysterious rootin' tootin' cowboy. Like a real ladies' man, what if we walked up to you and said something like, Hey there, what's a pretty bar like you doing in a girl... like this? The woman glares at you, you should probably just let her drink. That's fair. What's up guys, welcome to West of Loathing, a game that I know pretty much nothing about. This is the kind of thing that you guys have been recommending to me for years now. People have been telling me that it's hilarious, it's got stickmen, it's hand drawn. It's the kind of thing that I love putting up on this channel. So I finally caved in and decided to check it out. Wanted for protagonizing, Edward Thompson, reward 1,159 meat. Just meat. I, I think we might be okay. You know, I really doubt someone's gonna hunt me down and turn me in for a barrel of mystery meat. Oh, I can edit my name and my character. Well, if that's the case, then this is actually gonna be the story of Steve Mick but Nutter. Steve McButtnutter from a proud line of sharpshooting, highly wanted McButtnutters. Oh, come on, how am I getting in trouble for this? Trust me, you guys don't want to know what kind of terrible things you have to do to be worth 10,000 meat to the authorities. I had the strangest dream. I, I was shooting a carnival game for 20 minutes to become worth 10,000 meat. And I was choosing a character class. Do we want to be a cow puncher, a bean slinger, or a snake oiler? Uh, what exactly is a cow puncher? Oh, thank God, they're gonna give me a description. Cow punchers solve their problems with their fists, whether it's shaking them at a disagreeable feller in a disreputable saloon, or using them to punch a slightly more disagreeable feller in a slightly less reputable saloon. You've heard that cow punchers are in demand out west since the cows came home, which stands to reason. The cows aren't gonna punch themselves after all. <laughs> um, on second thought, I'd like to learn more about the others. What exactly is a bean slinger? Magic and cooking are inextricably intertwined in Loathing, and the Bean Slinger is the mystical master of both. You've heard there's a shortage of cooks out west since the cows came home, due to most of the cooks having been brutally killed by the cows. For a second there, I felt bad for punching them, but on second thought, I'd kinda like to know more about the Snake Oiler. Snake oilers rely on their moxie and chutzpah to tame snakes, their fearlessness to extract potent oils from those snakes, and their cleverness to manufacture and sell potions made from those oils. You've heard snake oilers are doing really well out west since the cows came home. Everybody needs potions and hope in these dark days, and also out west is where all the best snakes live. Yeah, I don't really want to deal with milking snakes or flicking beans. Even though I am hoping to meet a lady or two out west. I think I'm gonna be a cow puncher. Yeah, I wanna be a cow puncher for sure. Oh, look at my little home. Okay, where are the cows? We got work to do. We're gonna go ahead and limber up real quick. It's very important to stretch before any kind of cow fighting. Even though I don't think we're gonna find one in our bookshelf. You read the spine of one of your books. Leon Swift and the Curse of the Forgotten Cove. Dad gave me this one when I was a kid. Let's read another title. Victoria Jones and the Terrible Cellar. I read that one. Oh, hey, this one might come in handy. You got an item. Walking Stupid. I got a book about walking stupid? This book tells the tale of a renegade sheriff who was really, really bad at walking. Unlock stupid walking as an option. Okay. So, you read the book from cover to cover and learn how to walk really stupid. Stupid walking has been added to your options menu. So can I actually turn on something called stupid walking? You'd accidentally drop the book and then ruined it by stepping on it 30 times while you're trying to pick it up. Has the stupid walking option already been enabled? Yup, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that stupid walking has definitely been enabled. Well, that's staying on for the rest of the game. 
<laughs> I already love this. Uh, what about this? Goodbye, phonograph. I'm gonna turn it off. You pull the needle away from the cylinder and stow the handle away. Oh, I've got a giant bird who wants to talk to me. Hey, you Russell, how you doing? Gah! I'm gonna miss you, buddy. Gah! 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 Let's feed him a cricket. You grab a cricket from your cricket bag and feed it to Russell. He coos... Coos? Really? Appreciatively and nuzzles your hand. Goodbye, Russell. Be good. Or maybe it's time for you to leave, too. Yeah, I'm not gonna leave Russell behind. We're gonna let him go. You open your bedroom window, not pictured, and unlatch the door to Russell's cage. He winks at you and caws one last time, then flies away. It's time to hit the trail. Oh, I hope we get to see Russell on our adventure. I, I just want to walk around my bedroom. <laughs> I can almost understand saying goodbye to your desk, but what hair are we gonna comb? It's worth a shot, I suppose. You comb your hair one last time. You gain one XP. Progress toward next skill up, one out of five. Okay, so it's worth doing absolutely everything. We want to make sure to just kind of zombie walk around the house, and I guess if we find a mess, we can just stack the firewood, and there you go, two out of five. Easy peasy. This hearth really puts the hearth in hearth and home. Yes. Yes, it does. That's kind of the meaning. You're gonna miss mom's cooking. Maybe I can take a little with me? It's mom's pie safe. It keeps all her pies safe. Wasn't expecting mom to keep her pastries in a vault. That kind of sucks. <laughs> I'm gonna have a really hard time with stupid walking throughout this game, I can tell you right now. You'll miss meals with your family. Speaking of the family, do we have any idea where they are? I'm ready to go, you know? I've already combed my hair and packed my heelys. <laughs> Maybe they're in here? Hello? No, of course not. Your little brother's room. Oh, what has little brother been reading? An investigation of the laws of thoughts on which are founded the mathematical theories of logic and probabilities. None of it makes a lick of sense to me. Fair enough. <laughs> Philosophie naturalis principa mathematica. None of it makes a lick of sense to me. I'm starting to think these books might be a little over our head. Uber din ein sender blah 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 blah. I think this is about math, maybe? Yeah, you know what? The toy chest might be a little bit more up our lane. It's your kid's brother's toy chest. Uh, m excuse me? Is my brother a genius? <laughs> What's inside? <laughs> he loves stuff like this. You got an item, puzzle cube. Okay, that may come in handy. Who knows? Right now, I just gotta find them. Oh, this is interesting. We might be able to fiddle with the puzzle cube to make our brain bigger or wrinklier. Who knows? But let's fiddle with it. Yeah, okay, we got one experience. That's something at least. There's the Mick Buttonutter family. Of course, it's the middle of the day. They're farmers. Why wouldn't they be outside working? Mom, I'm getting ready to leave. Your mom smiles warmly as you approach. I'm leaving now, Mom. We're gonna miss you, kiddo. Oh, and before you leave, I got you a present. A present? Yep, it's that book you wanted for Crimbo. I know it's early, but the one about picking locks? Oh boy! The one about desert survival? Oh boy! The one about bartending? Oh boy! <laughs> oh boy, I actually gotta make a choice here. Do I wanna learn about picking locks, desert survival, or bartending? I mean, I would imagine out west there are gonna be plenty of bartenders and I'll be able to rough it in the wilderness, don't even worry about it. I wanna know how to pick locks. That seems really important when adventuring. That's the one, enjoy it. Please be careful out there. Write us a letter when you can. She hugs you, I will mom, goodbye. This book is a comprehensive guide to advanced lock picking techniques. It's got a whole chapter on tumblers. You really gotta wonder why my mom has this. You know, the wife of a farmer with the lock picking instructional manual. I'm willing to bet her entire side of the family is just nuts. They've got a seedy past. <laughs> you quickly memorize the entire book. You got a skill, lock picking expertise. Nice. After you're done reading it, you donate it to a local orphanage. Soon those orphans will be able to make their escape. <laughs> Go orphans, go! <laughs>
Hey, Pa, I know you're real busy guarding the hay, but I'm leaving now and apparently gonna crab walk over to you. Your father morosely jabs at the haystack. Time for me to leave, Dad. His lip quivers a little. Listen, I want you to have this. It's your grandmother's brass knuckles. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Good, good luck out there. Be sure to say goodbye to your mother. I knew Mom's entire side of the family was nuts. Grandma was punching cows long before I was ever born. <laughs> I did. Goodbye, Dad. Yeah, these were your grandmother's brass knuckles. Your grandmother was a force to be reckoned with. I'd say she was. Before we were known as the Butt Nutters, she was known as the Fister Sister. Dad seems to be rocking out right now, so I'm going to assume that he won't get pissed if I dig through his haystack. You know, I could use a needle. <gasps> Found a needle in a haystack. Maybe I can use that as a weapon. Right now, I've got to go, though. Uh, my little brother looks like he's allergic to everything around him right now. <laughs> I'm leaving, guy. Your brother Rufus is standing here looking nervous. He's pretty good at looking nervous. Give him his puzzle back. You hand him the puzzle and he starts fidgeting with it. Hey, Rufus, time for me to head west. I still don't understand why you're leaving. He's got a point, you know. Why are you going west anyway? To help people? To seek my fortune? Or to get off this stupid farm? <gasps> whoa, whoa, whoa! No one calls the McButtnutter farm stupid! <laughs> but that being said, I'm not exactly a selfless person, so it's to seek my fortune! There's just no opportunity here, kid. If I'm gonna make something of myself, I gotta go where I can make some meat! Uh, uh, okay? I mean, I'm worth 10,000 to someone else, but clearly I gotta make my own. But it's so dangerous. 60% of the people who go west get killed within a year. And that statistic is from before the cows came home. I'll be okay. You worry about taking care of mom and dad, and I'll worry about me. Okay, if you say so. I still think you'll be dead by Crimbo. I'll miss you, Rufus. Okay. He's a loving kid, that's for sure. You give him a playful punch on the arm, and he explodes into little bits because there's no way he's powerful enough to resist grandma's brass knuckles, or to be as strong as a cow. I mean, come on, it's my profession. I guess we should get going, even though I didn't find everything that I needed to level up. Can I get one full level here? Not spotting anything in the dirt. He's busy drawing pictures in the dust. Weird kid. Yeah, he's the weird kid. Drawing in the dust. It's not like I'm interpretive dancing my way through it. You know what? If Pa didn't want me heading west, then he shouldn't have drawn a giant arrow pointing west out of the farm. This is going to be on him. I'm ready to go. Hitching a ride across the Great Plains in what looks like a turnip wagon. You know, we all got to get around somehow. I gotta say, I really enjoy the game so far. It's just so random. Like, all of the little things that you wouldn't expect to be funny, like menus, they just decide to throw something in to make you giggle. It's fantastic. Oh, oh yeah, we, we, we want to keep those turnips down, okay? We're, we're in charge of making sure that he doesn't lose any. Oh, okay, no, we're just gonna toss it around. It's not like you're gonna lose a turnip doing that. Are you out of your damn mind? These are your mother's prized turnips. Can you please stop playing with them? This is what the opening to Skyrim would look like if it was made in 1995. 200 miles later, which is the equivalent of like a week of travel in all reality, I'm gonna smell like turnip for the rest of my natural life. Which is the new guy in town is not something that I want. They're gonna know me as the turnip kid. Well, the bad news is that you fell off the cart and got knocked out for a couple hours. Turns out those turnips were hard as rocks. And now you've got no rides, no meat, and no prospects. That's not true. I've got brass knuckles, a needle, and one really hard turnip. The good news is that you're in town rather than in a gulch somewhere. Not much of a town, though. Well, let's get up, dust ourselves off, and see what we can make of our new prospects. Uh, excuse me. Sir, uh, can't a fella have a drink and uh, peace? Sorry, 
Well, considering that guy's walking around drunk as a skunk, I really doubt they have a sheriff in town. Like, I should be able to grab my turnip in the middle of the street and not get accused of public indecency. <laughs> a turnip! You got an item. Dusty turnip. Fantastic. It's no meat, but then again, I am already full of energy. Oh, good. They don't have a sheriff. They have a sheriff. Excuse me there, sheriff. I don't suppose you're looking to give someone work as an air drummer, perhaps? Or maybe an erotic dancer? You know, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> Howdy, stranger. Welcome to Boris Springs. I'm the sheriff in these parts. The... What? Uh, the sheriff, okay. Blasted sign painters. <laughs> Say, you wouldn't happen to be looking for work, would you? As a matter of fact, I am. Depends on the work, or nope. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of desperate, but I could play hard to get. Depends on the work. Well, how does this grab you? There's a gang of hoodlums around here what call themselves the Fricker Gang. <laughs> Damn Frickers. Last time I arrested one of them, they busted him out and took my cell door with them. It ain't, uh, well, it ain't much good without the door. And, and I need somebody tough, smart, and or slick to go fetch it back for me. Uh, okay, yeah, you know what, I'll give it a shot. Funny you should say that, cause I'm sending the deputy along with you to keep you out of trouble. Takes a pistol out of his desk and hands it to you. Oh my God, the deputy is a pistol. It's deputy pistol. <laughs> deputy, you deputized a gun? You're new in town, maybe you ain't noticed, but there ain't much to do here except drink. Here, let me write down where the Fricker Gang's hidden hideouts is for ya. I think I might be a little drunk now, too, come think of it. He makes a little note on your map. You discover a new map location, the Fricker Gang's hideout. Got it, got it. Oh yeah, I guess this is kind of useless without a door. Well, you might drink a bit, but at least you're not completely... Simple, he says, as worming his way across town in poop. That's cow poop. G great. Well, I guess if all people do around here is drink and step in shit, then I might as well join in when in Rome. <gasps> oh, that's not good. You never want to walk into a saloon and have someone instantly interact with you, especially someone that looks like that. As soon as you walk into the saloon, the crazy-eyed guy sitting to the left of the door shrieks and waves at you to get your attention. Hey, where's your hat, Dag Nabbit? Well, uh, I... You can't drink in here without a hat. Taint proper. You want my taint to be proper too? Excuse me? He points to the take a hat, leave a hat box near the door. <laughs> All right, let's check out the box. You look through the hat box and find a sturdy looking Stetson. That looks like something you'd wear. I'll grab it. You got a four gallon hat. Put it on. Thanks, uh, Pete. Thanks, Pete. He gives you a friendly, if somewhat twitchy nod. <laughs> Say, feller. Yeah, you heading west? Isn't this west? I mean, everything is west, relatively. <laughs> Shouldn't be talking like that in a bar. If you want some company, I'd be more than happy to come along. Just let me know. You look like the kind that would eat me in my sleep. Well, er, uh, no pressure. <laughs> All right, I'll keep it in mind. Thank you. Oh, there are a whole bunch of people here. Now that I think about it, being the new guy in town could actually have its advantages. Look, no one knows who we are. We don't need to be some bum hick farmer from out east. We could be a mysterious rootin' tootin' cowboy. Like a real ladies man. What if we walked up to you and said something like, Hey there, what's a pretty bar like you doing in a girl like this? The woman glares at you. You should probably just let her drink. That's fair. I may be tucking my tail and running for now, but I'll be back. Oh, we got a spittoon. Yeah, it's a spittoon. People spit into it. You know without even looking in that it's absolutely disgusting. <gasps> I'm gonna look in anyway. Yep, it's full of spits. Regular spits, gross tobacco spits, chewing gum, and it looks like a few teeth as well. It's disgusting. And the smell, even from a distance, it smells horrible. We could look closer. 
<laughs> You're now on your hands and knees peering into a filth encrusted spittoon. I, I, I don't, I, I don't understand what is wrong with you. Wait, is there something shining at the bottom? No, that lady at the bar is never gonna talk to us. <laughs> Get it! You reach your hand toward the spittoon. Even before you touch it, you can feel the grossness in the air, like a greasy fog enveloping the stinking brass horror. It smells like the vomit through a mesquite barbecue eating contest. You hesitate. Never surrender! You plunge your hand into the awful soup. It makes a sound like glop. Your skin is burning. Your eyes start to water. We're so we're already in. There's no point in backing up. Okay, search, find it. Your fingers make contact with something. You pull your hand out of the devil's turn slowly, not daring to risk splashing the contents all over yourself. You appear to have gotten some kind of ring, probably some kind of disease as well. Congratulations! You got an item. Nasty ring. Hooray! Though getting this ring was traumatic, you have to admit that it was worth it. Plus one muscle, plus one mysticality, plus one moxie. So we're gonna constantly wear this, and now no one is gonna talk to us in this town. Excuse me, sir? D -d do you like my ring? Can I have a sip of your beer? No? Okay, maybe I can uh, play some poker. These two are playing poker, or at least trying to. They keep looking back and forth from their hands to the how to play poker cards. <laughs> they came with their deck, biting their lips and concentrating real hard. Oh no, I need meat, and it'll be such an easy win because they have no idea what they're doing. Oh, I, I need to find meat. Who has meat? Who has work? Anyone? How about you, bartender? You walk up to the bar and wait patiently for the bartender to notice you. While you're waiting, you see a sign taped to the back wall reading, Reward for Lost Mugs, 25 meat each. Oh, it, it's gotta be easy to find mugs, right? I'll, I'll keep waiting. The bartender finally notices you. Howdy, cowboy! I'm a cowboy. I'm, I'm not some bum hick farmer, I'm telling you. Howdy, bartender! Name's Steve. What brings you to our little backwoods? Oh, the usual. I came out west to make my fortune. Not having much luck so far, though. Any work around these parts? Unfortunately, Boring Springs already has more people in it than jobs. It's more of an errand town, if you catch my meaning. If you're looking for a real job, I'd recommend talking to the railroad people up by Dirtwater. Ooh, interesting. We want to ask about railroad, ask about dirt water, ask about errands, or... Le I want to ask about errands, you know? I'm willing to do a little thing here or there for some side hustle money. You mentioned errands. Yeah, this Forsaken Berg has always fallen apart in one way or another. The holster's always needing help since he hurt his leg and that no-account sheriff <laughs> could certainly stand to have somebody doing his job for him. Anything else? Well, I've got a goblin loose in the basement. You usually want to start with the goblin on the loose. Some cowpoke in from the gulch didn't wipe his boots off and got spores everywhere. I can probably handle a goblin, me and grandma's brass knuckles. Much obliged, I'll unlock the basement door for you. Oh, and you'll need this. Weak fungicide. I think this is supposed to say the liquid in this can is actually not very powerful. It's just that it's tailored to kill weak fungi. This item is used in combat effective against goblins. All right then, I guess we're just gonna head down into the basement. Uh, excuse me, are you a goblin? I don't know why I'm asking that, obviously you are. <laughs> what you got there? Piece of wood? Just rummaging through the garbage? I I'm gonna go up here and check for whiskey. A crate of nurse brand whiskey, good for what ails ya. Don't mind if I do. I don't suppose there's anything else down here I could rob? A pile of old newspapers? Yeah, okay. Boring Springs Gazette, April 20th, 1895. Oh, so this was well worth it. Uh, should I? Oh, I'm definitely gonna fight you for what's left in that drink. Let's go, goblin! That's <laughs> Rango Tango. You wanna know how absolutely nuts Grandma was? Her brass knuckles do more damage than Deputy Pistol. <laughs> that being said, I should probably use weak fungicide. Yeah, let's just spray you with this. There you go. And you're dead. Victory! Easy enough. And we leveled up. Our muscles are getting bigger. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, it's probably because I'm a cow puncher that the brass knuckles are so good. All right then, well, let's go see if the bartender is ready to give me a reward. I'm just gonna stretch my back real quick. Oh, bartender, howdy. Howdy, good to see you again, Steve. 
tip my hat. I took care of your goblin for you. Oh, thank you kindly, Steve. I knew you was a stand-up feller the moment you walked in here. She reaches under the bar and grabs a bag of meat. I am so sorry. I could have swore you were a dude. Here you go. It's the least I can do, by the way. Thank oh, 200 meat. Oh, I tip my hat. Tip, tip all the hats. Deal me in, boys. I've got the meat. Can I play? They look at you nervously. Look, I have some meat. Let's play. You put 20 meat on the table and sit down before they can say no. One of them shuffles the cards sloppily and deals a new round. You get a pair of tens plus a two, a three, and a king. Ooh, this is... I'm actually wondering now if they're just sharks. If they just sit here all day pretending like they have no idea what they're doing and then take dumb people's money. You know, like people from farms who have no experience in this kind of stuff. I'm gonna bet aggressively because I have just enough moxie to do that. Yeehaw, I'll bet 15 meat. They look at each other nervously, but they both call your bet. Okay, read them and weep. You show your pair of tens plus two, three king. The guy on the left has a full house. And the gal on the right has a straight flush? Uh, what? <laughs> um, so I could say that I win, assuming they don't know, which is possible, or I could intimidate them because I'm intimidating. I'm gonna intimidate them. You explain that jacks are worth nine points each, giving the guy on the left a total of 21 points, to the gal on the right 20, and you're 25 plus a king. And the king means that they either pay you in human teeth or an extra 10 meat each. They gasp and push more meat across the table at you. You collect your winnings and stand up. They thank you for helping them learn the game. I almost feel bad. Almost. But you know, 50 meat, it's a good place to start. I really want to talk to you, but I just, I can't. I, I got meat now, maybe I need to buy a drink. Can I drink with her? Oh, here we go. Who's the lady drinking whiskey out of the beer mug? Oh, that's Susie. She's a rancher from nearby. Real tough broad. I ain't recommend you pester her. Why's that? Lost her whole family to a cow attack recently. Jesus. Got some pent up frustrations about it. Oh, is that so? Frustrations that maybe we could bang out? Ouch. So, uh, ooh, a woman glares at you. <laughs> Howdy, Susie. Howdy, cowboy. Who's going to be searching the spittoon for his teeth if he doesn't leave me in peace? Okay, bye-bye then. <laughs> Just going to go over here. I guess I could roll on over to the Fricker's hideout and earn myself some more meat. Or I could talk to you. Step right up, step right up. Braid's the name and trade's the game. I seriously doubt that his name is Braid. <laughs> Howdy! <laughs> what are you trading? Well, sir, today I'm trading locks for soap and a stick of dynamite for a needle. And to the cunning Skinner who brings me three rattlesnake hides, well, to that adventurous soul, I will trade a fine silver pocket watch. Ooh. I have a needle. I don't know if I should trade it for a stick of dynamite though, because it said that I can use the needle to pick a lock and I know how to pick locks. Might not know how to blow up dynamite. I'm a bit of a dummy. <laughs> no trade right now, thanks. I'll, I'll, I'll remember that though. Uh, apparently the doctor's office is closed. Um, hi, can I help you? <laughs> you approach the weird cactus man hybrid. He smiles at you. Howdy, Cactus Man! Howdy yourself! And the name's Bill! Cactus Bill? What happened to you, Bill? <laughs> well, to be honest, partner, I drank too much cactus beer and it turned me into a cactus. Doc Alice warned me this would happen, but I didn't listen. And that's why they call you Cactus Bill? Nope, that's just a coincidence. <laughs> oh, does it hurt? Does what hurt? You know, being a cactus. Oh, <laughs> no, it's actually kind of nice. The natural fermentation process inside the cactus part of me keep me pretty drunk most of the time. I guess it is a mite boring. Yeah, I bet. It wouldn't be so bad if I had something to read. You don't happen to have a newspaper or anything, do you? 
I do! It, it's a little old, but you know, it's better than nothing. You give him a newspaper you found in the basement of the saloon. Much obliged, partner. Now, let's see here. What can I do to return the favor? Oh, I know, my shovel. I left it behind the outhouse at the Oriole Mine. It's yours if you get it. I'm sure you'll find use for it. Oh, well, thank you. Behind the outhouse, got it. Okay, thanks, Bill. Don't mention it. Really hope that it wasn't used for shoveling poop. Now, if you could just kind of stick that newspaper to my face before you leave. <laughs> well, at least we're making friends. Oh, I don't want to go that way, do I? I need to check my map. I want to go to the Fricker Gang hideout. I could just travel there. All right, deputy, get ready. We're going to sneak on up on this guy. Dud Fricker, the Fricker Gang's interpret lookout, <laughs> appears to be taking a little nap. Do we wake him up, shoot him in his sleep, or ignore him? I'm gonna ignore him. I don't think I should be shooting anyone in their sleep quite yet. I'm very stealthy though, unless I could rob them. Ooh, it's a pile of random stuff from the Fricker gang. All right, 25 meat, a mug, which is worth another 25 meat, and a pair of silver cufflinks. Did somebody need cufflinks? I can't remember. Either way, ooh, and if I get the forging ability, I can uh, make myself some cactus beer. Good to know. Well, let's sneak in. They gotta be in here somewhere, right? Ooh, they're still sleeping. Nope, they're, they're not sleeping, they are not sleeping. One of the Fricker boys is dozing in a bathtub. Let's tie him up. You grab a nearby length of rope and carefully tie his hands together and then to the handles of the tub. The sheriff can come collect him later. You got a perk, honorable. Oh, let sleeping bandits lie. Okay, so I can actually be a good guy or a bad guy. Something tells me these two are not gonna come Quite as easily, they are armed. Why am I swinging the light around? They're clearly gonna see me as I walk up to them. You cautiously approach the Fricker gang. They're pretty engrossed in their poker game, so it doesn't actually require that much caution. You hide behind a barrel, debatable, and eavesdrop on their conversation for a while. The one with the eye patch is quiet, but you gather that his name is Snipe, and that the squirrely one is his brother, Wimpy. Snipe and Wimpy, okay, what's your play here? Approach them and talk or leave without alerting them? I'm gonna approach them. You know what, maybe they're cool. Howdy boys, deal me in. The one without the eye patch raises an eyebrow at you. Who are you? How'd you get past Thud and Soapy? What do you want? I'm here for the sheriff's door. Oh, I'll show you the door, the door to hell. He reaches for his gun. Okay, then a fight it is. I've been waiting to rango tango someone else. How about we, uh, I guess we should punch him, right? Oh, he's got a sturdy barrel in front of him. Crap, so punching is probably for the best. Boop, right in the chest, and they've got guns. Oh, okay, I think they missed. Just keep punching, wham. Maybe they put your back into it? Oh, we're dead. Well then, who would have guessed that you shouldn't bring grandma's brass knuckles to a gunfight? I think I figured out a way to trick the Fricker gang. I can now say that it's Bimmy. Oh, it's me, Bimmy, your brother. He squints at you. Bimmy? You ain't Bimmy. Oh, sure I am, ask me anything. Or I am too, back me up here, Snipe. Or I am so Bimmy, I stole some Rube's face. Yeah, they're face thieves. We're just gonna hit them with that. Ha, huh, you always did have a knack for face rustling. What's new, Bimmy? We gotta get out of here and fast, Wimpy. The Pinkertons are on to us and they'll be here any minute. Dagnabbit, come on, Snipe, let's hot tail it. I'll catch up, you guys, later on tonight. Wimpy nods, he and Snipe hurriedly pack up their belongings and flee the cave. You congratulate yourself on your attentiveness, memory, and strong interpersonal skills. Well then, and I leveled up to get grit something that has nothing to do with any of those things. <laughs> Let's just grab the door and skedaddle. They left the door behind. Good, grab it. Oh, Sheriff is gonna be so proud of me. I could just handstand my way out of here. Did I do anything to help this guy? I'm just gonna leave him here sleeping in a cave by himself? He's as good as bat food. I see the Fricker gang hasn't put a stop to your breathing. Did you rescue my cell door? You hand the sheriff his door and he hangs it back on its hinges. Nice work, stranger. This here prison cell just got about four times more secure. <laughs> Are there any Fricker boys left for me to round up? Yeah, one or two are still asleep on the job. 
You, maybe you could help them out. I really don't want them to get eaten by bats. I'll go round them up shortly then. Looks like I owe you a reward. Got a big bag of meat. 400 meat. <laughs> got another little task for you. If you got the time, it should be a lot simpler than the last one. What do you need? Uh, well, the frickers busted the lock when they came in the door. Gonna need a new one. I know a guy who can trade me a lock. I just gotta get him... Uh... What was it? A uh, uh, braid? What do you want for a lock? Soap. I gotta get soap. Uh, okay. How am I gonna get soap? Maybe the bartender has soap? I do have a mug to trade into you. Hello, ma'am. Howdy. <laughs> Howdy. Good to see you again, Steve. I found this mug. Oh, much obliged. 25 meat. All right, well, I guess that's it for now. Where would I find soap? Look, I don't even care about getting rich, okay? I don't want to live on a pile of meat. I want to impress Susie. That's going to be my goal for this series. You know, and I think that's going to be it for this episode of West of Loathing, guys. I didn't expect this game to be this funny, okay? It, it's way better than I would have thought. I should have listened to you guys sooner, but now you guys are still going to have to let me know if you want to see more, because I can guarantee if this does become a series, and if I do inappropriately smell Susie's cooter again, then it's going to be like a dozen or more videos. So be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, letting me know all that kind of stuff, and then maybe I'll return to head further west soon. But thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.